that the only entrance or the only access to our heart, the only access to our heart that the, through which the shaitan can reach our hearts, this access, there are two ways. There are two ways or two, what we can say, doors or two uh, windows through which the shaitan, the Satan, can access our hearts. What are these two windows or two doors? Two things. Lust, the hawa, and the second is the doubts. That's what Imam Ibn Qayyim said. Imam Ibn Qayyim said, Rahimahullah, shaitan can access your heart through either shahawat, desires, lust, or shubuhat, doubts. So, how to close these two doors? How to close the door of lust? That's by the taqwa, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thinking of the consequences. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will help you to close this door of lust. The other door, how you close it? The door of doubts. Shaitan comes, puts doubts into your mind. That needs ilm, knowledge. So the knowledge will help you to overcome and to oppose these satanic temptations. How are the desire or this evil inclination? Because here, bear in mind that the word how are we, we should get used to this word how are, how are, how are, which means inclination. So this inclination, either it is as we mentioned in the beginning when we started, either it is praiseworthy, that is when you are inclined towards righteousness, or blameworthy when you are inclined towards doing evil deeds. So the hawa is the opposite of the, the hidayah, is the opposite of the divine guidance. So always we should do the opposite. If you want to prosper, if we want to succeed in this life, we should always act on the contrary. Do the opposite. Because your nafs will never dictate to you to do good things. The nafs always tends to invoke and tends to encourage you to do evil deeds. That is the nature of the nafs, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna nafsa la maratun bisu. Indeed, the human soul is prone to evil. So that's the nature of any human being. So the na our nature, that always our souls tend and incline towards evil. So we have to act on the contrary, do the opposite. What your nafs dictates to you, do the opposite. Then and only then, inshallah, you will succeed and you will prosper. Also, we think about the, that the, uh, among the tips, inshallah, is that the pleasure, the pleasure of sinning is short. It's very short. And then the consequences are very dreadful. That's why in Islam, the Muslim scholars, they say, a sin will breed another sin. A sin will breed another sin. And also they said that the perpetration of sin, when you perpetrate a sin, what happens to you? Sweetness, the sweetness and the pleasure and delightfulness precedes the doing of the sin. And the bitterness comes after. I will explain this. Whereas the doing of the good deed, the bitterness precedes and the sweetness follows, comes after. When you want to commit something shameful, something haram, a misdeed, evil deed, before doing it you are only thinking of the fun and the pleasure you are going to have. That's the only thing, yes, I'm going now to do this, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to have that, etc. You are thinking of that only, and the sweetness of it. But the moment you finish doing such horrible act, you feel bad about yourself. You hate yourself. You regret, and you might cry, and you feel that your chest is squeezed, as if someone is squeezing your chest. That's what you feel. Because that is the consequence, that is the result, that is the bitterness which you are going to have until you enter the grave. So, when you commit a sin, 
before committing it, you will only think of it as sweetness, which is very limited, short. But the bitterness will, be, will remain with you till the end of your life. And the opposite is true. That the bitterness precedes the good deed. And the sweetness follows. For instance, to get up for the fajr. We are talking about the Muslim men. They get up for the fajr to go to the masjid. It is here difficult. Bitterness only. You feel, oh, it is cold. How can I leave this bed and take wudu? It is cold. And also walk in this cold weather. It is bitterness. Something against the nafs. But if you get up, take wudu, and go to the masjid, and you attend the congregational prayer, what do you feel after the salah? MashaAllah. Sweetness, delightfulness, lightness. The same thing in taraweeh. Before the salah, or if the imam is reading, MashaAllah, one yuzu or two yuzu, long salah, you feel it is difficult for you. But the moment you finish the salah, you enjoy the salah and you feel the sweetness. So the sweetness comes after doing the good deed. And the bitterness comes before it and the sweetness following it. The sin, the opposite. The sweetness first and the bitterness will remain with you forever. So think of that. May Allah save all of us from falling into the traps of the shaitan. Amin. Also among the tips, insha'Allah, that if you follow your hawa, if you follow your desires, you will be disqualified from being a leader of the righteous, an imam for the righteous, a role model, because this will disqualify you, because you are not the right person for that. Also, the one who follows his desires, his hawa, is just like an idol worshiper, because the hawa is another idol. I did not necessarily be a statue, not necessarily be something tangible. Sometimes it can be something immaterial. So this hawa is another idol. So if you are following your own hawa, you are worshipping another idol. So you are not worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. You have another God that you worship, which is your own hawa, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Have you seen the one who has taken his hawa, his desires as his own ilah, his own God? Also among the tips, so if we reflect and upon these things, this inshallah will help us to stop following our own vain desires. The hawa is the fence of Jahannam, subhanallah. The Fence of Jahannam is the Hawa. As you know, brothers and sisters, when Allah Azza wa Jal, He created the heaven, the Jannah, and paradise, and the hellfire. 